Coco's 2D Sample Project Memory Game Part 5 In the previous chapters, we have seen how to implement our memory game logic, scoring and feedback using Coco's 2D in Xcode. Let's open the Memory Game Project file by double-clicking the Memory Game Xcode Proj file. Let's run the application to see the current status of the project. We can see that the application runs with a play menu and a background image. On clicking the play menu, another scene is loaded with a background image, a home menu, and 12 mask or frame images. Pressing any of the mask image will bring an animal image in place of the mask image. If images that are opened at the same time is same, then those images will disappear and otherwise the mask image will take its place after 2 seconds. There is also a home menu on pressing the main menu scene with play menu. Let's move forward and make modifications to this project. In this section, we are going to add one more factor to our memory game play scene. We have already added scoring based on points. Now we are going to implement time as a factor for the game. For this, let's add a background image to show the time to the project. Go to the play game scene interface file and declare a sprite object for it. Also, we have to declare some label objects for using to display time. We have to declare the integer variables to store the elapsed minute and second values as well. Now move to the implementation file of the gameplay scene. In the edit method, create and add the background sprite for the time label to the screen. Now we have to create and add the five label objects we have declared to the scene. We are using five labels because we want to display the time in minutes and seconds, which is separated by a colon. Each digit in the minute and seconds value is also separated by a space. It is possible to implement this using a single label also. But for now, let's use five different labels. Also, we have to initialize the integer variables to store the minute and seconds value to zero. Next step is to schedule the timer method, which will be called every second using the schedule interval method. We have to now implement the timer method. Inside this timer method, let's remove the already existing labels from the screen as we are creating new labels every time. Give the text of the minute and the seconds labels as the string values of minutes and seconds values. Now we have to implement the language to count and increment time on our own. Let's increment the second seconds variable value we have declared every time this timer method is called. When the value of this variable becomes greater than 9, then this variable is set to 0 and the first seconds variable is incremented by 1. Similarly, if the first seconds variable value becomes greater than 60, then the second minutes variable is incremented by 1 and the seconds variables will be reset to zero. This is to implement the fact that 60 seconds will mean one minute. Likewise, once the second minutes variables become greater than nine, then it is to reset to zero, and the first minutes variable is incremented by one. Here, if the first minute value becomes greater than nine, i.e. if the app time exceeds nine minutes, then all the minutes and seconds values are reset to zero. Run the application and open the game scene by pressing the play menu. In this game scene, we can see that the timer display is working exactly as we intended it. Now let's go to the play game scene interface file and declare two variables to store the answer count, which will store the number of pairs of images identified and the time taken in seconds, which will store the time taken to finish the whole game in seconds. So in the implementation file, Let's initialize these two variables to zero. Now we have to increment the answer count value by one every time a pair of image is opened. Once the answer counter value becomes six, it means that all the images are identified. Let's write the code to display the time taken to complete the game in seconds in the console. Next, we have to compute the time taken to complete the app in seconds. For this, let's go to the timer method where the time label is getting updated. Increment the time taken in seconds variable by 1. Now inside the condition where we are checking whether the answer count value is equal to 6, let's implement the code to stop the timer. This can be done using the unschedule method. The parameter passed to this method is the selector method of the timer to be stopped. Run the application. Go to the game scene 
and play and complete the game. We can see that the timer is getting stopped. Now check the console and we can see the time taken to complete the game in seconds. Next we are going to implement the best time taken in our memory game. For this, let's declare the integer and label variables needed for that in the interface file of the Play Game Scene class. Now open the implementation file and go to the place where the timer method to display the time is unscheduled, i.e. when all the image pairs are identified. Here we are going to implement the best time. First, we are going to save the current time in seconds. We need to save the current time only if the current time taken is less than the previous best. We use the write to file automatically method of NSArray for storing the value. We have to store the current time as the first object of the array, which we are going to save. Now we have to implement the two methods we have used just now. The display function and the save file path methods. We are going to add the game refresh menu in the display method. For this, first let's add an object to our project. Create a menu item using the image we have added. Create a menu using the menu item we have created just now. Give a position for the menu and add it to the scene. Now we are going to implement the code to read the best score for the saved file and display it on the screen. We can use the init with contents file method of NSArray to get the saved array. The first object of the array will contain the best time in seconds stored in the app. Use the labels we have declared in the interface file to display the best time on the scene. Next we have to implement the save file path method which will return the full path of file to be saved or the file to be read. The files are mainly saved in the documents directory of the app. We can remove all children of the scene using the remove all children with cleanup method. We have to implement this method in the dialloc method so that all the children for the scene will be removed once the scene is deallocated. Next we have to implement the refresh method which will be called when we press the refresh menu once the game is over. In this method, let's give the code to make the fade transition to the play game scene. Yes, we are loading the current scene itself. This will give the effect of reloading the scene with a transition effect. Run the application. Go to the play game scene by pressing the play menu in the home page. Complete the game by identifying all the image pairs. We can see the best time and values getting displayed. We can also see the reload or refresh button. Press the refresh button and we can see the scene is getting reloaded. Run the application once again and complete the game. We can see that the current at the best time is getting displayed. Reload and complete the game once again. We can see that the best time is changed to the current time. This is because the current time is always getting saved. The issue is with the fact that we have given the condition to save the current score if the current score is less than of the previous best. But we haven't read and obtained the previous best score before this check. So let's go to the edit method. Here, read the contents of the file and store it to the best time variable. Run the application and complete the game. We can see that now, only if the current time is less than the best time, it's saving the current time as the best time. Reload and try this again to test whether it's working fine or not. We can see that the best time is now working flawlessly. So in this section, we have seen how to implement the best time loading and saving system, how to display it in the scene, and also how to reload the game scene for our Cocos 2D memory game using Xcode. By this, our tutorial for the Cocos 2D memory game comes to an end. The project files are available with this tutorial. You can try making some modifications on your own and see how it's working.